This is Pocket Watching with JT, the call in financial talk show focused on helping you get your money right. Jason Thornton is a certified financial planner licensed in both tax and investments. Now, this is not personal financial advice. This is JT's real reaction to all your money and business questions. Are you deep in debt, living paycheck to paycheck, and looking for a way out? Call Pocket Watching with JT, the financial advisor for the people. Need more? Book your personal consultation with my man JT at pocketwatcher.net. Now, let's go pocket watching. Pocket Watchers, welcome to Pocket Watching with JT. I am a certified financial planner on YouTube that reacts to bad financial advice in your money questions. So first off, I got to give a big thanks to all of my subscribers. We just hit over 75,000 subscribers this week. So listen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Do me a favor as you make your way into the live stream. Make sure you hit that like button, share this content so we can help more people. All right. So here we go. Here we go. What are we talking about tonight? <sighs> what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about scam your leisure. All right. Scam your leisure. Also, as you can see, we got merch, right? Look at us. We got, we got, we got merch with pocket watching with JT. Now, uh, if you would like to get some of this merch, there is a link in the, uh, in the description of this video, or you can go to my YouTube channel, just click the store tab, and you can get yourself some pocket watching with JT merch. Look, we got we got misdemeanors over felonies. We've got uh what scam master J real estate fund. We got it's a scam pocket watching with JT. And and my favorite, you know, this is one of my favorites here. The the the, the fake guru shirt. I, I really like this one. You know, it says doctor, nah, lawyer, nah, entrepreneur, nah, fake guru. All right. So in the description of this video, you can find the Pocket Watcher merch or you can go to my website, pocketwatcher.net. Click the Pocket Watcher merch link and you can get yourself one of these T-shirts. So I, I. Back to the actual show. So what are we talking about tonight? Tonight we're talking about scam your leisure. Now, I want to be clear, right? I want to be extremely clear. When I say scam your leisure, I am not talking about one particular podcast. When I say scam your leisure, I'm talking about a genre. I'm talking about a particular style of urban podcasts and YouTube channels who claim that they're doing it for the culture and they claim that they are wanting to raise the financial literacy level of the community. Great cause. I, I, I champion that cause. But in what I refer to as the scam your leisure brand, Far too often we find that they're bringing on guests to their platforms and they're trying to claim that these guests are here on the show to help you understand how money works and to raise your financial literacy. But based on what I see, they're really there to give you a sales pitch. They're there to try to sell you some course they're there to try to sell you on some one-on-one -on -one coaching or a mastermind, whatever it is. They're there to sell you something. And very little financial literacy actually happens. They're really there to sell you something. And the actual host of the show, if they provide you with an affiliate link, they're in on the hustle too, in my point of view. Because the person who's on the show as a guest that is pitching you coaching, courses, whatever, when you buy that course or mastermind with the affiliate link, the host of the show makes 
money. So to be clear, that's what I mean when I say scam your leisure. Not one particular podcast, but a whole group of podcasts. All right. Now, Many people will say, hey, well, JT, you've got beef with Earn Your Leisure, right? You guys got beef. And I just want to be extremely clear. I do not have beef with Earn Your Leisure. That would be an inaccurate statement. What happens is I critique bad financial advice wherever I find it in the Black community. It just so happens that along with a bunch of other podcasts, Earn Your Leisure's content has been featured on my channel more than once. And what makes them a little bit different from the other people who I critique, they get a special type of butt hurt when I critique their content. I mean, no, none of them like it. I want to be clear. Absolutely none of them like it. But the Earn Your Leisure group They really don't like it. They get a special type of butt hurt. So let me quickly go through and explain how this started so we can really get into the show. So pay attention to the screen because I'm going to show you a quick timeline of how we got here, right? Pay attention to the screen. So here we go. It was about two years ago, two years ago, I made this video. As you can see in the red box, it clearly shows I made this video July 7th, 2021. At that time, I probably had around 10,000 subscribers. Not a very big channel. I mean, I know it's all relative. There's people who have a channel that only has 2,000 subscribers. They would love to have 10,000. There's people that have 10,000 subscribers. They'd love to have 100,000. I got it. But... In the big scheme of things, my YouTube channel, very, very small compared to Earn Your Leisure and all the other groups of podcasts. Very, very small. Made this video July 7th, 2021. Okay. Now, what was I doing in in this video? In the description of the video you see, Financial advisor Jason Thornton CFP reacts to Marcus Barney, aka Him 500, giving bank fraud advice with Earn Your Leisure on the Big Facts podcast, right? That's what this video is all about. I was reacting to an interview that Earn Your Leisure did, and they brought their whole crew with them. They brought Wall Street Trapper, they brought him 500 and a host of other guys they brought on to the show. Now, to refresh your memory, I'm going to play the clip of the video that I reacted to. I want you to see what I saw so you can understand what happened. So here we go. Cash right here on Big Facts today. Y'all stay tuned. www.bigfactspod.com You're listening to Big Facts with Big Bank and DJ Scream. Live from First Class Sounds, you know who it is, DJ Scream. Big Facts is going down. Big Bank, Baby J, we'd like to welcome (laughs) to Big Facts Podcast, the brothers from the Earn Your Leisure movement. They brought the whole movement. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for having us. Love is love. And today we are definitely looking forward to um, answering some of the questions uh, for some of the people that we we don't know all the answers to. But basically, uh, people is always DMing us and asking us how to get some motherfucking money. Especially (laughs) if you're black, you're in the streets. How can we get some motherfucking money? Okay, so I want to hear how we just yeah, flip the credit. Give him the mic. Uh-oh. Y'all didn't put a treat. So, and please talk to them talk about to line them. of credits, too, while you're at it. When so, you get them. Yeah. It's, it's even bigger than line of credits. So if you going, if you got somebody coming out the street, so it's going to be straight to a demographic or what you said, you got a lot of niggas that's going to come out here and be like, I ain't got shit, fuck that credit. Right? But in reality, they don't know is that if I come with a bank where I got 50000 and I'm not willing to trust nobody to invest, what I'm going to do is I will go to a bank. You can go to Navy Federal, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, they're the best. You go to Navy they're Federal right now and apply for an auto loan. You could pull a VIN number off of car gurus. They'll give you a loan if you say, okay, look, I'm going to get out of play. You go in there and say, I need 100000 right? <clears throat> What's your credit got to be? 700 plus, right? 
I give a blueprint on this show how to build your credit report out in detail. You go to Navy Federal, say, listen, I need to get 100000 You get a car guru VIN number, and when you get the VIN number, you put it and mark it down 10000 They cut you the check 24 hours. A car guru, say that again? Car, car guru. guru. Car Just get guru. a VIN number to right. apply for the loan. Right. They're going to cut you the check 24 the hours. You got 90 days to give them the title. If you don't give them the title, it turns into a personal loan. So they just legally gave you the loan. It ain't nothing illegal. It turns into a personal <laughs> loan. But ain't no way in hell you can go to the bank and get a personal loan. So for everybody out there, if you get your credit up, it's free game on this show. Then what happens is, okay, you Hold got on. 100000 from the bank. Go ahead. Slow it up. Slow it up. Slow it up. Hold on. Slow it up. Slow it up. We're going to watch it over and over. Don't worry. Slow that shit down. Do it again. Not on slow. We're going to watch it over and over. You just got to jump in. You right. just got a hundred thousand from the bank. It, it's an auto loan. Mm -hmm. It's at three percent for the first ninety days. Three percent. Three to five percent, right? Damn. For the first ninety days. After that, it turns to a personal loan. The interest rate go higher. What happens is, is now you got a bankroll. So now, if you want to risk somebody money, risk the bank's money. So when you see a Wall Street trap, or when you see the earn your leisures and the and the earners anonymous, you now can say, okay, well, shit, this they them folk money anyway. So I put ten thousand over there, test it out. See, this is where it now. But what happens is, most of us. We'll get the money and go blow it. Instead of going blowing it, you got some. You got these white folk money. Go invest it. Go figure out and gamble their money. So now instead of rolling dice, you're saying, okay, let me put ten thousand on Ethereum. Let me put ten thousand in Bitcoin and see how it grows. Then you start to learn and then you get comfortable because now that's the beauty of all of us. We got communities where you can come and get with people who look like you, who are making the same moves. When you got niggas out the streets making two hundred thousand a month, who look like you, off of investing money, right. flipping less than you had. Right. They right. flipping less than you have, but they making 200,000 a month and they look just like you. Mm -hmm. the issue is education and getting comfortable. But if you ain't comfortable enough to risk what you didn't risk your life for, then go get the money for money with the credit. Come back and play the game with them. That's how you're going to get to the next level. <laughs> That's how you earn your leisure. I'm with him. I'm with him. I'm with him. Big flex. Big We're out. Both buttons. Yeah, both. I'm, hard, I'm with him. That's why, that's why he's here. That's what I'm saying. Y'all remember y'all asked why we travel with each other? Yeah, that's a fact. That's why. That's why he's there. That's what they said. That's why he's there. Quick shout out to Universe Soul King in the building. Thank you so much for the super chat, my brother. Thank you so much. Now, clearly, anyone with a sober mind, if you hear what him 500 just said, you either know for a fact this is bank fraud or you're scratching your head saying this doesn't sound right. Not too many people would listen to that and say, you know what? That makes sense. I'm going to go to a bank, intentionally lie to the bank about what I need from them and what I'm going to purchase with a loan. I will then put it and document it on a loan document claiming I'm going to buy a particular car, knowing you're not going to buy that car. Then, they're going to cut you a check for that car, assuming that you're probably going to cut the check in the name of the person who you claim you're buying the car from. So now you're dealing with some kind of conspiracy because now you got to get a check cashed in someone's name that doesn't really own the car. All of this is going on. You have to scratch your head and say, you know what? Even though this sounds good for me to go into a bank and get a $100,000 signature loan that I clearly don't qualify for, it doesn't sound right. So that's why I made the video I made. And yes, I clowned him 500 because honestly, what he said was worthy to be clowned. You should be clowned if you go on a major platform. And really, it doesn't matter if it's a major platform. It can be a small platform. But especially if you go on a major platform saying stuff like that, you should be clowned. Now, here's the issue. Him 500 and Earn Your Leisure, after they saw my video, they could have done a bunch of different stuff to kind of mitigate the damage. They could have you know, made a post explaining that, listen, we didn't know that it was bank fraud. Uh, we apologize. We should make sure that we vet the information that we provide to the public before we say it, because this could be damaging. They could have did that. 
They didn't do that. They could have went to big facts and say, listen, um, you know, we found out from, you know, an actual financial advisor kind of pointed out that what him 500 said was actually wrong. And, you know, you don't have to take down the whole interview, but that part, can you go ahead and just kind of edit that part out? Because in YouTube, when you make content on YouTube, you can edit a part out of your video, but still keep that original video up and it'll still get the same views. It's not like you got to take it down, edit it and put it back up. You know, there's a way to do that in the back office when you have a YouTube channel. They didn't do that either. I'm about to show you their reaction of what they did. Clearly, to me, it shows a pattern of behavior, how the whole scam your leisure brand deals with damage control, right? They want to mitigate and get away from any type of thing that will make their brand looks bad. And this is what they did. Now, what I'm about to show you guys is, is new. Like if you've been watching Pocket Watching with JT since day one, you have not seen this. The only other person who's seen this document has been my wife. So this is an exclusive, exclusive. I just want to briefly explain about how negotiating styles work. In business, and in public relations, there's generally two styles that you can go with in negotiations. You can try to be persuasive and offer certain uh, incentives in a negotiation, or you can come with the strong arm in the negotiation, right? It's, it's somewhat similar to the pimp game. Now, I know a lot of people who watch finance podcasts, you really love street terminology based on the people who you watch. So right now, I'm going to give you some street terminology to help you understand what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not a street dude, never claimed to be one. I don't want to be one. But I am a guy who grew up watching HBO. And on HBO, they had several documentaries about the pimp game. And what I learned from those documentaries is there's basically two types of pimps. There is a macking type of pimp. See, the mac type of pimp, he tries to control his women with his words. He's, he, he's a sweet talking type of pimp. He, he promises his women uh, all these gifts and all of this, you know, this great lifestyle they'll have as long as they do what he tells them to do. That's the Mackin pimp. Now, there's another type of pimp. They refer to this pimp as a gorilla pimp. Now, based on what I saw in the documentary, a gorilla pimp is not sweet talking anyone. Gorilla pimps aren't about sweet talk and convincing. Gorilla pimps use straight force to get women to do what they want them to do. Now, why are you talking about macking pimps and gorilla pimps, JT? I want to show you the tactics of the Scam Your Leisure brand to try to get me to remove the video. Now, once again, let me bring this up to the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Here we go. I want to make sure that you notice these dates here. I think this video... July 7th, 2021. That's when I made this video. And almost immediately after I made this video, the Scam Your Leisure brand came at me with the macking pimp negotiations. I, I'm just, just, just pay attention, follow me. I get a call to my office that the owner of a major media brand wants to talk to me. I'm thinking, oh man, it looks like somebody wants to interview little old me. Pocket watching with JT, they want to interview me. All right, cool. So, you know, I missed the call, so I had to call them back because my receptionist took a message. I call them, and all of a sudden, I realize they don't want to interview me. They're speaking on behalf of the Scam Your Leisure brand. And they're giving me an offer. If you look at this email, 
you can see that this is an offer for me to take down the video. Now, notice the date in the red box. This is July 8th, 2021, 5.05 p.m. The video wasn't up for one full day. Not one full day. And I get this offer. Now, I blocked out the info because of some, you know, some, some privacy issues. But if the scam your leisure brand try to claim that I'm lying and I made this up, I'm more than willing to pull back the black marks and show you exactly who sent me this email. So if you want to call me a liar, then I'm going to show you who sent me this email. But here it is. July 8th, they sent me this. It says, hi, Jason. Thank you for taking uh, the time to speak with us today. Please remove the video attached here. They they attached the link to the video. In return, I blanked the person's name out because if you saw this name, you would know exactly who I'm talking about. In return, this person will do the following. This is the deal that they gave me. They said that they will, one, build a relationship with you and a major media company. Now, this is the owner of a major media brand in the black community. Someone who is extremely friendly with Him 500 and Earn Your Leisure. They've done business together, okay? They said that I can build a relationship. What does that mean? Well, on the phone, this is what they explained the relationship would be. This brand is not a finance brand like Earn Your Leisure. So I could come up and I get interviewed on this brand and this platform anytime they had any type of financial news pop up. I would be the go to guy. I would be the correspondent, the financial correspondent for this media brand. Right. Something pops up about money. I would be the guy. The other thing they promised, they said, we will connect you with Marcus. This is him. Five hundred Marcus Barney. We'll connect you with uh, Marcus to see how you can build together. So I guess I'd be a part of the of the circle of CEOs. I'd be able to, you know, go to the recession proof annual conference and speak on stage. I'd, you know, be able to go out to dinner with Earn Your Leisure and be at Invest Fest and speak and all that stuff. This is the relationship that I'd be able to build with Him Five Hundred if. I take the video down. Here's the third thing. We will wire you $5,000 also. Once again, my video, my, I still consider my channel to be small. But two years ago, my channel was really small. I had just got monetized. I want you to understand this. I want you to understand this. At the time I got this offer, I had just got monetized. In order to get monetized on YouTube, you got to have like 4,000 watch hours and you needed 1,000 subscribers. I had just got monetized maybe two or three months before this. Just got monetized. They were going to pay me $5,000 to take down a video that was not even up for one full day. And the video didn't even get that many views. The video at the time, at the time, the video probably had less than less than 3,000 views because I was a small channel at that time. The video probably had less than 3,000 views. It was up less than a day. All right. Th this is all of the stuff that they were promising me if I just took the video down. Now, I politely declined. Before you start calling me a hero, and before you claim that, oh, JT, he's got way too much honor and, and integrity to take that deal. Listen, I'm nobody's hero. I'm not a hero. I'm just extremely petty, okay? I'm extremely petty. My level of pettiness simply exceeds my greed. That's all it is. I'm not some kind of Captain America. You know, it's just I'm so petty that exceeds my greed. 
Would I like to be on a major platform and be the face of money talk on a major platform? Yeah, that would be cool. But I won't do it if I have to leave my pettiness at the door. I just can't do it. That's just how I am. So I declined this offer. This was the macking pimp offer. They were making all these promises. I was going to make, I was going to get all this money if I just took the video down. I said, you know, no, thank you. I appreciate it, but no, thank you. Now, let me show you the gorilla pimp. That was the macking pimp. Here comes the gorilla pimp. When I said no to this offer, pay attention to the time and date. Thursday, July the 8th, 2021 at 5.05 p.m. This was the macking pimp. When this didn't work, here comes the gorilla pimp. About one hour and 30 minutes later, I get cease and desist notice on behalf of Earn Your Leisure LLC. Well, what happened? We we were just we were just on such good terms. The whole scam your leisure brand, they were they were gonna have me on the stages. I was gonna speak on the platform. I was gonna be the financial expert when they I, we were so cool about an hour and a half ago. Now you hit me with the cease and desist notice, right? And it says, you know, in the uh excerpt here, I got says, Mr. Thornton. If you have legal counsel, we ask that your counsel advise us of the intentions of your actions to immediately comply with our request in this matter by close of business on July 9th, 2021. Remember, I made the video on July 7th. I get the offer for all the gifts, the money, the platform. I get that the eighth. They're telling me now when I decline that offer, take the video down or here it goes. Otherwise, we will inform our client to immediately proceed with additional legal actions, including but not limited to commencing federal litigation proceedings against you. So they're going to take me to court. They're going to take the pocket. They're going to take the pocket and watch it in the court. Before, I was going to get money. I was going to get fame. I was going to get all of this stuff. I say no to that. An hour and a half later comes the gorilla pimp. And now I need to get my stuff together or I'm going to go to court and they're going to sue me for everything I got. And I'm going to be broke and penniless on the streets of St. Louis. So I just want to show you guys the extent that the Scam Your Leisure brand will go to avoid taking responsibility. All they had to do was just say, you know what? JT was right. That was bank fraud. We apologize. We take responsibility for our platform. When we give people a voice, we believe we're helping and giving good information. But this time, it didn't happen. Bad information went out, and we apologize for that. That didn't happen. They wanted to hide. They wanted to, one, they wanted to pay, right? They wanted to pay money to get it over with. When the offer of paying money didn't work, then comes the gorilla pimp. Now they're coming at me with the with the strong arm. Here we go. Take it down or else. So that's how we got to where we are now. That's how we got here. Now, I got my brother Eli in the back, and I'm about to bring Eli up. Now we're going to react to this video here. Recently, with all this scandal of scammers getting exposed, and we see that these scammers have been put on these platforms, Earn Your Leisure came out with this video, a message to scammers. Now, you probably won't be able to find this video because they took it down in less than a day. They had that video up probably less than a day. But the pocket watchers, you guys out there, you recorded this video and you gave it to me. So thank you. I appreciate that. 
So we're going to react to this video, which was called a message to the scammers, but they took it down. So let me bring up my brother, Eli, from what happened to Common Sense. What, what's going on, Eli? Oh, man, there's just so many different places I want to start from. But before we get into the video, it is amazing to me how they will try to indirectly address us without mm -hmm. directly saying our names. And right. for years, remember, I, I've been making videos about Jay Morrison, Brother Polite, Umar Johnson, et cetera, for over five years now. And they've called me a clout chaser. They've called me a coon, an agent, mm -hmm. an Uncle Tom, a homosexual. They did everything <laughs> but address the actual issues that I was speaking on. And mm -hmm. they all the time try to paint it as if we're watching them and we're chasing behind them. But isn't it funny that in a matter of a less than a day, they was able to see your video and actually take it down? See, <laughs> right. I'm not clout chasing y'all. I didn't even know they knew who I was. <laughs> so it, it, it goes to show you that, like I said the other day, I'm not clout, I'm not clout chasing you because all of you watch me. You know who I am and you know what I'm saying is true. See, you're the clout chaser because you use celebrities. You use entertainers. You can't lead with information, which is why you need all of the gimmicks to sell your events, to sell your courses. Because as we can see with Hem 500, when you actually start to speak about the knowledge and the information, you are clearly lacking. And, you know, especially when you play the clip with Rashad, where he's giving his statement, he can't even look in the camera. Because oh, he, don't get to he that. doesn't even believe he doesn't even yeah. believe the things that he's saying himself. See, a real educator, a real person who's knowledgeable in a subject matter beyond just the surface level would never say what him 500 said. Not only does it not make any sense from a legal perspective, but from an investing perspective, funding is debt. It is not money. <laughs> funding has to be paid back. So when you're going out here and you're getting this car, right? And you're doing all this illegal stuff. How are you going to make the money back to pay back the funding? Because see, the interest rate's only 0% for the first 12 to 18 months. Then it bumps up to 22, 25, 29%. And if you've maxed out that card, I'm pretty sure the Toro play after taxes, after fees is not bringing in enough to be able to sustain the amount of funding that you've taken out. You know how I know this? Because I have student after student of these people who took the Airbnb course, who took the Toro course, and it didn't work out. A play is a hustle. It is not a business model that's sustainable. And this is why time and time again, instead of them simply allowing me and JT to do what we do, they elevate us to make us bigger than we ever could be. Because people <laughs> listen to us and realize, yeah, that shit they're saying don't make any sense. And I want you guys to look at the body language of all the people in the room. Not one of them questioned anything that was said there. And he said something key. If you are a nigga coming from the streets, here's the play. See, I want you to understand because see, as we start getting into this, this is way bigger than we even can think about what's really going on here. And I'm going to get into that later on. This is much bigger than you and I could ever even imagine. But I want you to understand this real quick. Mm -hmm. If you are not a street nigga and you do not abide by, and I have to use the word nigga, because, see, there's a black man and there's a black woman, and then there's right. people who want to be street, street thugs. If you are square, if you are well-to-do, meaning black person, they're not marketing to you. They're not talking to you. See, here's what's happening. A lot of well-meaning black people who are trying to be entrepreneurs and businessmen and women are getting sucked into a lot of this mess. And this is bigger than selling courses, and this is bigger than events, because at the end of the day, these people are not making money from real estate. They're not making money from stocks. They're not making money from crypto. Hell, they're not even really, really making money from courses. They're making money from defrauding people. That's where the money's coming from in a lifestyle. And what me and JT is doing is we're giving you the other side, right? So now you have an other side, another opinion as to whether or not that is a sound financial decision to make. And instead of just letting me and JT do what we are doing, you now want to try to attack us reputationally. You want to try to physically come up and confront us. You didn't want to call us clout chasers. And little do you know, you're really, you're giving us the attention when the best thing you could do is really just ignore us. But see, right. the ego won't it's allow like you to do that. It's like the classic Barbara Streisand effect. It's like, 
if they just would listen to what we say, <laughs> listen to our critique, and then adjust the way that they do things, right? If they would actually get someone, they don't literally got to get us. We're we're pretty busy. Both of us run businesses. We're pretty busy. We're not going to get hired on as W-2 employees of Earn Your Leisure to vet people. But if something should have sparked in their mind, okay, let's stop giving them content and just actually start vetting our guests. Like when you said the cloud chasers thing, that's hilarious because when they came up on me in LA, notice they came to me. I didn't go to them. I didn't even see them. So to be in LA in a very busy area, we're talking about the Hollywood walk of fame. And for them to notice me and come up to me, who's really the clout chaser? Exactly. You're watching, <laughs> You're really watching me. See, I, I've even caught them, like, like when I say them, I don't necessarily mean earn your leisure, just people part of that crowd. Like, yeah, I that's what I call them. it. The scam, the scam your leisure <laughs> brand is more than just one group. R recommending the same books that I recommend, repeating things from my crypto course that I have, literally using the same lingo. Like, it, it gets to the point where don't try to pretend like you don't know who I am. Don't try to sit up here and pretend like as if, you know, I'm only... No, I'm only noticeable because I make content about you. No, you know who I am because number one, you know the stuff that I talk about, I'm actually knowledgeable. And see, there's some clips that I want to play on top of what JT is going to play to, go, to kind of show you guys what's really happening here. They're only doing business with people whom they feel that they can cross pollinate the audience with. That's mm -hmm. already a quote unquote star or that they can make a star and then they can do business together. Because see, these are not allegations when we're speaking about someone like Big Biz Business or Caesar. Big Business has lost multiple lawsuits. So when they sit up here and try to say like, oh, these are allegations if these things are true. Oh, no, they're very true. To the point where Big Business has settled with multiple individuals. And you've taken down the video. So clearly you had to know something to take the video down. So I'll let JT get to the clip because there's so much that we can really react to in here that just show that they're disingenuous at best. Oh, absolutely. All right, so here we go. Let's go to the clip. This is the video that they- uh, To that people they or taking money from somebody. Real quick, shouts out to Mark Monroe, man. Thank you so much. He says, Petty is my spirit animal. Listen, I I'm a grown man. I'll be 40 in a couple of months. In my pettiness level, it drives at least 30 to 40 percent of my actions. 30 to 40 percent of my actions are driven by, by, by my pettiness. And I admit to it. So <laughs> shout, shout out to Mark Monroe, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, here we go. This is the video that they took down. This is supposed to be the message to the scammers. Off the rip. If there's anybody that has ever scammed someone or taking advantage of people or taking money from somebody and not giving them what they actually promised them. Or if somebody was supposed to invest with them and they gave them money and they didn't do it and they just ran off on the money, then A, you should be ashamed and embarrassed. And B, they- All right, pause. I, I, got, I got to mention the point that you made before because I had that in my notes. Look at the body language. now. I'm not some sort of body language expert, right? They don't bring me in the court cases to do body language expert witness. I, I don't do that. But I am a financial advisor who gets pitched a bunch of investments, either for myself or for my clients. And I watch people make presentations all the damn time. And body language has a lot of power. And if I look at a person who is hunched over like him, looking down, this is a defeated man. This is a sign of defeat. This is a sign of loss. This is also a sign of I'm being forced to do something I don't want to do. Like, like Eli said, it looks as if he doesn't even believe what he's saying. <laughs> he's just being made to say it. Look at him. It's written all over his face. And what I want to say here, listen, man, please don't don't twist what I'm about to say, because I am not trying to, you know, demean or put down people who are handicapped or disabled. But every time I watch this brother, he just gives me like a little like he's a little delayed, you know, a little a little like he 
he's not really that sharp. I, I don't really think he's the sharpest knife in the knife set, right? And you know, you got going back to what you was talking about the other day, like these are supposed to be financially literate people, yet right. they're investing in Ponzi schemes. <laughs> And they're investing in pseudo hedge funds. And then now they're turning around and have a guy who's promoting open clear bank fraud. And he goes, that's the most dangerous man on most the internet. Most dangerous man on the internet. You motherfucker, right? He's dangerous. He's dangerous because he's going to send your ass to jail. That's the dangerous part about it. He's extremely dangerous. Because if you go and follow that advice, I can promise you where you're going to end up in jail. So it's like, you know, the body language is kind of defeated, but I get a little sometimes, like when I look at him, he, he, he just look a little off, a little delayed in the mind. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just me. Again, I'm not putting anyone down. I understand right, yeah. people may have learning disabilities and stuff, but he just to me, man, I wouldn't really yeah. take a lot of stuff he say serious. He seemed a little off to me. I'll just be honest. Listen, listen, we both had one-on-one -on -one conversations with him. <laughs> All I can say is he wasn't the quickest in speaking. But I'll be honest, when you're talking to me, I'm a little overbearing. I start talking and, you know, he started getting <laughs> real quiet when I started talking and his comebacks weren't very quick because he couldn't come up with answers. So I, you know, there's, there's validity in what you're saying. There's, there's yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank there is no safe haven. There is no friendship that anybody at earn your leisure has for anybody that's taking advantage of anybody. And that goes for anybody that has ever been on the platform that may have done that. Whether it's Greg, whether it's Caesar, whether it's anybody. And if they are innocent of doing that, then their name should be vindicated. But if they are guilty of doing that, then they should be punished and they should once again make the people whole and they should be ashamed and embarrassed for themselves. Because at the end of the day, there's no benefit for scamming somebody. There's no benefit for taking advantage of nobody. What the hell? See, this leads back to what What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> what, what are you talking There's no benefit. Scamming is a billion dollar a year industry. Scamming is very monetarily beneficial. What are you talking about? You are a grown man who claims to be someone who's one financially literate and so much financially literate, you want to teach other people. And you get on your platform and say, there's no benefit to scamming people. If there was no benefit, people wouldn't do it. The benefit is they get money by either providing a subpar service or product or not providing a service or product at all. It is very monetarily beneficial. <laughs> what is he talking about? I want you to play a little bit more of it because I want to get to something in a second. Play about 10 seconds more when Ian right, makes a right. comment. All right. And, and there's no benefit for us to actually be friends. That's, that's the part, too. It's like you got to be careful about a narrative, right? It's like earn your leisure. It's not in our benefit to be friends with people. Like we don't hang out with these people. We don't know these people like that. Earn leisure is a media company. So what we do is that we bring people on and they provide information, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at Earn Your Leisure, from Earn Your Leisure to Market Mondays to Assets Over Liabilities, over 415 episodes have been shot so far, right? So what happens is that when you have 415 episodes, there might be five people that have issues, yeah. right? But it's hard to- Allegedly. It's hard, allegedly. Mm -hmm. right it's hard- Stop right there. Now, on my screen, I'm sharing my screen, JT, can you show it? All right. Yep, let me give give me one okay. second. There you go. <laughs> because the master investor said allegedly. <laughs> In the case of big business, this is not alleged. Big mm -hmm. business has been hit with the real estate Rico twice. Two times. Not once. Not twice. once, but twice. And he's actually had to settle. He's had a judgment against him. This is the case right here. You can go and look the case up right here on Pacer. See, Officer E actually goes out here and engages in real journalism. And I go up here and I look at the, see, anyone can get sued because I like to teach. I like to have a little bit of entertainment and joke around, but I also mm -hmm. want to teach. Any business can get sued. We live in America, the land of litigation, but it's the nature as to why he was sued 
and how many times he's been sued for the similar business practices or fraudulent or deceptive business practices. And here we are now two, three years later, and you have 15 people with the same exact story as to what he was sued for. So see, understand when Officer E speaks, I am not speaking from an allegation standpoint. No, he's actually lost and had to pay it out. Now here's what happens. Because he settled with the person, part of the settlement is a gag order. And now when the individual actually sent this information to Tony, big business, see and this is how you know these people are not even smart. Instead of just shutting his mouth, and going after the guy because he violated the gag order. His ego is so big, big business got on Instagram Live and said, oh, you know you violated the gag order. So he's admitting to not <laughs> only do we got the documentation, but big biz, and this with a Z, goes on IG Live and admits to the fact that, yes, he did settle with the dude, but because he violated the gag order. See, these people are so brazen with their mm -hmm. fraud. And this goes back to the gorilla pimp versus the quote unquote, you know, knocking type pimp. He that's mm -hmm. gorilla pimping on something like he's he's so bold that he's saying, yeah, I scammed the dude and I settled with him. But now I'm gonna go back and get that money back from you. Now, if you don't believe me, I'm gonna share another screen here because I think mm -hmm. that this is important when we're speaking, right? So right. go ahead, we stop the screen share and I go here right. onto Tony's page and we can actually see the settlement. I believe it's right here. Yep. Go here. Boom. This is the individual right here. Your matter is settled. Schaefer and Amy, you can go look up the case. The guy Ray was paid $66,000 and Rudely was paid $18,000. So this is not an allegation. Greg <laughs> Big Business has engaged in fraud and organized crime with his companies, and he had to go and settle multiple times. So when they sit up here... This just goes to show you how disingenuous they are. And then when they right. say, well, we've had 400 episodes. We're not talking about the episodes with <laughs> Steve Harvey, with the clout chase, or we're not talking about with Mark Cuban, because Mark Cuban's not selling a course. Mark right. Cuban's not doing it for the culture. Mark Cuban's not trying to solicit your audience for investments. So see, you have to understand, when you're talking to me, you're talking to someone that can walk and chew gum. I'm highly intelligent, and I'm highly educated. See, so understand, right? I'm, I'm not on the spectrum. I'm not a little slow, right? I'm intelligent. So when you speak, see, I listen. See, one thing about me, I've learned. You have two ears. I listen twice as much as I speak. So I let you talk. We're talking specifically about the episodes that you endorse, about the people that you bring on your platform, about the people who you elevate as if they're so, somehow an authority in a particular space or a particular subject matter. You said him 500 was the most dangerous man on the internet. And me and JT said, you know what? He absolutely <laughs> is. So now let me show you why he's dangerous. He's not dangerous because he's going to get you funding. He's dangerous because he's going to get you locked up. That's what we're doing here. So when you sit up here and try to make it seem like you have 400 episodes, no, we're talking specifically about the entrepreneurs, the doing it for the cultures, people that you're bringing on in. That's who we're speaking about. How do you know it's only 1%? If you don't even go look at the court cases, it could be 5%, 10%, because for hell, all we know, we're just going to take the video down. Oh, I listen. We, I got to back this up a little bit because there's something that he said that was to stupid. know. It's something that he said that was stupid and clearly incorrect in my point of view. So let me back it up a little bit because what he says is so silly and we're going to break it down. So it's have been shot so far, right? These people like that. Earn Your Leisure is a media company. So what we do is like you got to be careful about a narrative, right? right or scamming somebody. There's no benefit for taking advantage of nobody and there's no benefit for us to actually be friends. That's the, that's the part. There it is. There it is. There's no benefit for us to either be friends with or have scammers on our platform. Okay, let me break this down real quick. What could be the benefit of having a scammer on your platform? Rashad, let me try to educate you on this. When you bring these clowns, these grifters, on your platform, when you champion them, when you promote them and they sell their course, 
you have an affiliate link in the episode. So when your audience, your million plus audience goes to buy that scammers course, you get paid. You make money when that scammer sells their course, their coaching, their mastermind, you make money. There is a clear benefit to you to have these clowns on your platform. Now, later on in the interview, and we'll get to it, he talks about how no one has ever paid Earn Your Leisure to get on the platform. We'll talk about it more when it pops up. But even if you can say no one paid you to get on the show, but if they're paying you for the sales that they make from the show, how much different is it? It's either taking podcast payola through the front door or getting it through the back door. But you're still getting paid by a person who came on your show as a guest. You're still making money off of it. That's the issue. But let's let's get back to this because the video is not even that long, but there's so many stupid things. Like what he's about to say about CNN. If CNN has, you know, somebody on, CNN doesn't have an affiliate link last time I checked, Eli. If <laughs> Sam Bakeman free came on uh, CNN and when people who watch CNN would get an account with FTX, if CNN was making money off of those accounts, there would be a clear issue there. And I CNN didn't the make money off of it. I want you to finish playing the clip because I want to address that point. I want the people to hear it and then I'm going to pull up something on my screen to address that. All right. Part two is like, you got to be careful about a narrative, right? It's like, earn your leisure. It's not in our benefit to be friends with people. Like, we don't hang out with these people. We don't know these people like that. Earn Your Leisure is a media company. So what we do is that we bring people on and they provide information, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at Earn Your Leisure, from Earn Your Leisure to Market Mondays, Assets Over Liabilities, over 415 episodes have been shot so far, right? So what happens is that when you have 415 episodes, there might be five people that have issues, yeah. right? But it's hard to allegedly it's hard allegedly mm -hmm. but it's hard to know two years in advance that okay this person 24 months from now is going to take advantage of somebody you don't have chat gbt in your brain to kind of predict the future mm -hmm. right it's like cnbc if they bring sam bankman fried on and champion him because he said that he's a wizard they don't know that in 12 months he's going to be taken down for the biggest scandal possible they don't get blamed for Not that right there. they're right 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 there so I want to show you something again. See, and, and again, I, I, I have to keep harping on this because he knows his audience and who he's speaking to. He's not speaking right. to people like someone like, you know, me or JT. He's speaking to people who he know is going to go for that. Right here on the screen, you're looking at, if you type in the name Sam Bankman Freed on YouTube, the same platforms that championed him, that bigged him up, that gave Sam Bankman Free the clout and the prestige also addressed the scam allegations as well. They actually covered as, the as scam soon as they came out. <laughs> right? They didn't just take the video down and act like nothing happened. They didn't sit up here and said only the real should prevail. They didn't uphold some bullshit street code and doing it for the streets, right? No. They engaged in what you recall journalism wow isn't that amazing isn't it funny how notice that i'm not threatening anyone notice i'm not pulling up on anyone notice i'm not trying to get to the real street to be a real nigga i'm just simply engaging in what you say you do journalism right. you're right. referencing and, and, and notice and they, they, they were trying to make it sound like well the court case hasn't come in even though you just clearly show the court case has come in and Greg Big Business ended up losing. But they're making it sound like, well, we're not talking about it because, you know, the we don't know for sure. Well, all of these media outlets don't know for sure just yet because Sam Bankman Free, his court case hasn't even really started, let alone concluded.
but they're all still covering it because they feel a responsibility because they covered the good side. They also have to cover the other side. So they want to be known as the fastest growing media company, company in the world. Well, why aren't you representing the same thing that these media companies that you compare yourself with, what they do? They big up someone when they thought they were doing great. The moment that there were whispers of Sam Bateman free doing something bad, they covered it. And like I said, here's CNBC, and it says the fall of FTX and Sam Bankman freed. So I just want to show you how either he's extremely delayed, and I believe that's part of it. You know, everything's not really working well there, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And also, he's just disingenuous. And he, they right. see, they know their mark. They know the particular individual. And this is why they use a lot of hip hop and street mm -hmm. culture, because see, a lot of that ideology and lifestyle reinforces ignorance. See, when you are an intelligent black man or black woman, they all, all, all the time will try to get you to dim your light, to dumb yourself down. So this is how these stereotypes, they even exist. If you speak well, you're trying to act white, right? And if right. you have an education, somehow you're lame, right? You're not, because you're not a brute, you're not a thug. So therefore you're not really a real black man. Like these tropes and these stereotypes exist for a reason. So mm -hmm. this is why they try to craft what they do in this street type of culture to get individuals who's going to buy this concept of that this is clout chasing or this concept mm -hmm. of, you know, well, if you get robbed or you get defrauded, you know, you just shut up and you keep it in the streets. You, take, in reality, it. <laughs> you, you just take it and see, I want you to understand this, right? If I come to it, because I got a lot of family members, you may not believe this, but I have a lot of family that they are in the streets and they've served a lot of time in prison. And they always come to me and say, man, put me on to what you do. And I tell them no, because I know that they're not capable of doing what I do. But see, mm -hmm. these individuals are trying to sell you on the idea. See, this is the problem that I have with it. You have people who are trying to tell you that, yeah, I cut 10 niggas. I shot 10 motherfuckers. I went to jail. <laughs> And now I clean my life up because of stocks, because the crypto and they're trying to get you who may have that similar background, who may have right. really did that. Because, see, they ain't really do that. What they trying to pretend they did. I'm a three time fella at 19 years old. I was on tier one up in Rikers Island, but now I'm Scam Master J. He, <laughs> that's a facade he made up. But see, here right. it is. You may have really lived that. And they're trying to sell you on the idea that you can leave the streets and come and do real estate. When in reality, they haven't even perfected what they're trying to sell you. And see, right. now what they do is they get you to go get funding and they take 10 or 20% of your funding. And then now, because they know you got a hundred grand or you may got 200, 200,000 from the street, they say, invest with me now, buy into my mastermind. So here it is. You're buying into the street culture ideology, thinking that somehow they're going to get you out the streets and you buy into that only to find out that what they're doing to you is worse than can what happened in the streets. Because at least in the streets, if you get robbed, a person's going to run up on you with the gun. They're going to make you feel the anxiety of getting robbed. These people who have big business in them, they're going to take your money and then call your bro and sis and king and queen while they rob you. <laughs> See, that is what's disingenuous about it. The fact that they're using culture and they're using black trauma and black pain to reel you in, to make you think that somehow they're going to be liberated or that you're going to, this is your reparations and this is going to help you out just to scam you and just to defraud you. That's the problem I have with them. And that's why I go so hard because these people, like people keep talking about the courses. These people are not making money from courses. These people are making money by getting people to give them a hundred grand, 200 grand. That's where the real money is coming from. The courses and stuff are just the front to reel you in, to really prey on you. And what's happening here is worse than what happens in the street. Um, absolutely. All right, let's get back to this to this video and break this down. Be a company, right? But if you really look at it, if you take a step back, when you take emotion out of things, then you have to start to use logic. So if you take emotion out of it and you say, okay, well, let's say there's five people, right, that may have been accused of doing something, right? And there's 415 episodes. What is that? That's 1%. Yeah, that's less than the that's iPhone. Less. That's less than the iPhone breaking down. That's less than any type of customer service, like as yeah. far as the, the margin of error. But any margin of error is, is too much, right? But let's just put it in perspective because, once again, some narratives are shaped by jealousy and envy. And when people can't 
assassinate you, then they'll try to assassinate your character. I oh, so, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Once again, this points to something that you said before. These Negroes honestly look in the mirror and they believe themselves to be social activists. They believe themselves to be civil rights uh, heroes. They really believe that they are someone worthy of an assassination attempt. <laughs> Negro, you sell courses and you talk to celebrities about money and business. No one has you aimed out for assassination. Nobody. You're not Martin Luther King. You're not Malcolm X. You're a Negro who blew up with a podcast. Congratulations. During the pandemic, when people were at home and you were having people on your show that were giving fairy tales about how you can make money, it sounded good. There was a lot of money in the economy from PPP loans, from stimulus checks and unemployment checks. And they gave you views and they made money through the courses. No one's JT, trying I to want, assassinate you, bro. I want, I, want to share, I want to share something with you, right? Because see, understand, you, you, when you talk to me, you're really talking to someone that's highly intelligent, right? So yeah. see, when you talk about trying to assassinate your character, an assassination would mean that when I'm assassinating your character that somehow I'm saying things about you that are not true, that I'm personally right. attacking. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen again because see, one thing about me when I speak, right? I don't, I don't slander. I speak factually with receipts, with things that I actually can verify because if anything that I was saying was true or legitimate, you know, you could sue me. So let's go right here. And I want you to look at this video right here. It says the truth about Forex, right? Mm -hmm. So now, like they say, we, nobody pays us to get on here, right? <laughs> no one pays to get on Earn Your Leisure. But if you come down here in the description, it says right? save $500 on Jessica full Forex course. And then, wow, if we click it, boom, it goes over to Jessica's course. Now I have to share the screen. So let me stop right. sharing the screen. Right here. So let's go right. here now. And we come and we share because look where the link went to. Boom. It goes to Jessica's page. Wow. Where is the slander? Where is the assassination? Where is the lie? So, yes, she may not be paying you directly to get on the show, but not, not you're benefiting from it somehow monetarily and as i said before there's nothing wrong with making money see understand this i am not saying that there's anything wrong with that business model there's tons of people who engage in affiliate marketing you recommend tesla a person buys a tesla you get three percent of the sale people recommend apple products or affiliate marketing is one of the best ways for a brand to grow so i understand that and i'm not coming at the business model what i'm saying to you then is that you clearly are biased and at that point, there's no longer about education, and it's an infomercial. That's, what, right. that's what's going on there. That's propaganda. Because you're not engaging in real journalism at that point, because you're not going to ask the difficult questions. You're not right. going to ask a person to provide you with bank statements or trading statements or brokerage statements so that you can actually see, well, how much money do you actually make, Jessica make, right. Lane, from actually with Forex? Because, see, if you're selling a $5,000 course, and you only make $500 a month from day trading, then, you know, at that point, clearly we don't know that you're in, <laughs> it doesn't add up. So, see, this is where, again, the journalism comes into play because that's not journalism at that point. That's propaganda. And I know what you're saying. Oh, Eli, you found <laughs> one video. You found just one video. Just one. Hey, this one. You know, it, it's not every video. They don't do that on every video. So going to show you one more video because i know the hotel back to africa red black and green b1 group economics crowd you're gonna say oh man y'all just coons and agents coming at some real ones so we come here and boom right is this the video let's go here share it now we come down uh -huh. here we look at the screen this is the guy aristotle invests right follow me here so it goes keys oh, to that's it. It. stock investing marketing aristotle investments so we come here and look what it says right here. We zoom in. 
Link to Aristotle's mentorship, $1,000 off. HTTP honeydripeyl.com. But see, follow me here. Follow me here, right? Because I'm going somewhere. <laughs> I, want you to, I want you to understand. See, when I speak, right, I'm not creating a narrative. Mm -hmm. This is reality. See, uh, see, I, I know you're a little spacey mm -hmm. and your brain ain't really working right, right? It takes a little while to focus. You can't even look at the goddamn camera. So let me help you out here, right? This is reality. <laughs> Physical, five senses, things you can see, touch, taste, and feel, right? This isn't the metaphysical. It's not the root chakra. It's the reality. That's a video on your channel. It's not, it's not 19 <laughs> Keys. 19 Keys isn't talking about how your consciousness goes around saddened and come back. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure. Because right? yeah. I know you've been hanging with 19 Keys. You probably put on one of those bullshit-ass crowns, right, to stop from 5G radiation. But that is your YouTube channel. It says, earn your leisure with the check. And if I go here, it says link to Aristotle's mentorship. So now the question goes to why would you put that person's link there if you don't benefit from it? And I'm going to show you exactly why right now. Because, see, if you let a person talk long enough, they will show you and tell you everything that you need to know. So if we come here to mm -hmm. this right here, boom. Uh, give me one second. All right. I want to make sure that this is the correct clip. Can't there we go? Common sense. Hey, and shout outs to everyone who hit me with the super chat. I appreciate it. Make sure you take some time to hit the like button, share this content. This needs to be heard. This is not clout chasing. This is not hating. We're trying to give you the right information so you do not make a financial mistake. That's what this is about. There, there's the clip right there. I want you to listen to what Rashad says here because if you let a person talk long enough. They'll tell you all you need to know. This is very important here as to why they have certain type of guests on and not having on qualified individuals. Watch this. Mm. Mm. The part that nobody wants to talk about as far as the celebrity. Most celebrities have bosses. So it's difficult to become a celebrity if you own your own entity because you're not getting pushed the same way. Like the NBA is pushing the NBA players. Like record labels are pushing musicians. It's in their best interest to make sure that these people are stars. It's not in a person's best interest to make sure that an entrepreneur is a star because they're not underneath their umbrella. Like I'm not getting paid for this. So why is it going to benefit me to make you a star? This is when strategic alliances come into play, but I'm just giving away too much gain because now <laughs> you, you tread it in very thin water. Let's get away from this. The answer is media. Create your own media. That's it. This is the part that nobody wants to talk about as far as the celebrity. That's it. That is it. He he slipped up. <laughs> he slipped up and basically gave you the earn your leisure business model. He's not in the business of creating celebrities out of this uh, out of business owners unless he can benefit from it. But let them tell it. I'm slandering them. I'm jealous. I'm a coon. I'm an agent. I'm trying to assassinate their character. No, you're bringing on. See, is a reason why when you're in that room with the big fact, the big facts podcast, and you have mm -hmm. everyone in there with the assets of a liability shirt, and you specifically have the Wall Street Trapper, specifically have him 500 in there. You're having people whom you have a business relationship with that is going right. to benefit you some way financially which is why they are there. Remember, you're talking to someone that's a little bit faster than you, a little bit more intelligent than you are. You can't run that bullshit on me. And like you said before, you're not in the business of creating stars, meaning there may be a brother or sister out there that's smart as a motherfucker, but I ain't going to bring them on because I ain't going to try to make them a star. Instead, I'm going to prop up the person that already has someone of a following, has some clout, because at the end of the day, it makes us look better, and I can benefit from that person financially. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with it. But then mm -hmm. don't try to sit up here and make it seem like that's not what you're doing, right? Don't sit up here and make it seem like, oh, now when these people get caught out, they're not my friends. I don't, I don't <laughs> we, hang out with we, these people. We don't hang out. <laughs> We're just we a don't media hang company. out together. What are, you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? We're just a media company. We just put out media. No, you are a media company that is targeting a specific demographic of people. And you're going out here and you're selecting people that will reinforce the type of brand that you're trying to build. And what me and JT are simply doing is we are fact checking the information. Because, see, right. 
One thing my professor used to always tell me is you have to be able to research the researcher, meaning that when a person presents information to you, you need to be able to get the sources as to, well, where did you get this information from? Because, see, some of these Negroes want you to believe that they are the source of the information. Right. Like, the, I mean, they could go back to ancient Kemet, ancient Mesopotamia. Umar knows everything about every single African country and every African dialect. Yet you're giving them money and they can't open up a school. Yet you're giving them money and they can't go out here. They don't even know what two by four is. Yet you're giving them money. They don't even know what a Ponzi scheme looks like. So it just goes to show you how disingenuous these people are or just how much of a fool and an idiot they are. All right, all right, back to the video. We're going to finish. Especially black people. We have to be mindful of that and really start to use logic. Why would it be in our benefit to support somebody who's a scammer? We don't get, nobody can pay to get on Earn Your Leisure. If you, you said found, because there's a rumor I even got sent that you guys are charging. If you found somebody that <laughs> paid to be on Earn Your Leisure, show the proof. Show the receipts. Please. Show the receipts. I heard somebody say. I think we just kind of outlined the way podcast payola works through the back door let's say we take them at face value you don't accept money simply to get on the show but why are they doing the affiliate link are you telling them that they can't sell their products unless they you get a, a affiliate link why are they doing it they doing it out of the goodness of their hearts they're they're going to share revenue on the sales of their products to you out of the goodness of their heart you know what's going on here. So that don't act dumb. I think it's like you said, he knows his audience. They're only going to listen to what he says and just be like, oh, yeah, cool. Wow. What, how are they benefiting? You're benefiting from making money. Like Ian Dunlap's course is $40,000. Imagine <laughs> what the affiliate payment is on a $40,000 course. It's ridiculous. But you know, like you somebody, you said, somebody said that seven thousand. Like, please, I'm not worth it. That's no, just, please, that's disrespect. I'm offended. Yeah. I'm offended. But that's not even like I. I know, real, real quick, he's a he's offended. I, I, I want to talk about this real quick. He's offended at the idea that someone could pay him seven thousand dollars to get on the show. He's offended. Well, hold on. Your good friend. Marcus Barney, him 500. He openly admits that he paid million dollars worth of gain, not 7,000, not 10, not 20, not 30, not 40, but $50,000 to get on their show. That's your good friend. The Earn Your Leisure University is now powered by him 500 last time I checked. So if your good friend is going to pay not a financial podcast, but a hip hop podcast, million dollars worth of game is a hip hop podcast. He paid them 50,000. He's your good friend. He's your business partner. He didn't pay you any money. That's not a good friend. That's not a good business partner. He's paying a million dollars worth of game, 50000 and you doing it for the free. Last time I checked with those pimping documentaries on HBO, it don't make sense. It Pimps don't up, make sense. Now. Uh, that's what, <laughs> it, that's what it, uh, I saw HBO, but I want to build this for a second. I want mm. you to just, again, we're high-level thinkers over here, right? Let's put this, let's frame this in the proper context. He's so arrogant. He is so bold that he said, like, that's beneath me. Do you know what Earn Your Leisure is really over here doing for the culture? Like, they get paid 7000 to get on this show? So clearly he's letting you know he touches some real money. Now, I want you to understand this. Last time I checked, me and JT ain't making $40,000 to make this content. <laughs> we ain't making. So I would love to get paid $7,000 to have a guest come on my show. Right? Nobody's <laughs> paying me to come on my show. But somehow they want you to believe that we're clout chasing and that somehow we are benefiting from this. When in reality, they're the ones that's clout chasing and they're the ones that's benefiting. They're getting millions of dollars. I lose money when I make this content because guess what? None of, none of them are going to want to work with me. 
not all. Like I, I, I killed oh. all potential relationships, right? Now think about it. If I just simply ran the fake guru play, I could go make forty, fifty thousand dollars too, like they do. So it just goes to show you that the incentives, the the monetary incentives, lie on their side. They're the ones benefiting from all of this. We don't benefit from this because the clout you get doesn't turn into money. It doesn't turn into revenue. It doesn't turn into anything because at the end of the day, it's not like the people who follow them are going to magically come and buy my course or, jo or join anything <laughs> I got going on, right? It's the, ce the celebrities are not going to pay me $40,000 to speak at my event. So who's really clout chasing and who's really benefiting financially? See, it, when you are an intelligent thinker, you can read between the bravado and see no, you're the one that's benefiting financially. Elon JT, what? You may make $100, $200 from your super chat, and then you two are going to take 30% of that? I mean, like, come on. They're making, these people are making millions of dollars to do this. Right. It's, just, just, just imagine, he's talking about logic, right? He's talking about <laughs> logic. Well, let's, let's be logical for a second. If we're benefiting so much from this, why are they the ones so upset? Why are they the ones that are offering me $5,000 to take down a video that was only up for one day? I'm getting the offer to be on some big platform to be able to be on these all these shows and do all this stuff for a video that does not pay me. For, like that, that video right now has like 80 something thousand views. That video is even with 80 something thousand views on it. I haven't made 5,000. And that's a video that's two years old. So really, who's clout chasing who? Who's focused on what's going on? They're the ones that are really incentivized by trying to focus on trying to get the attention away from any bad thing you do. That, I mean, that's just, if, if they just take responsibility and say, hey, we messed up. This this episode wouldn't even be airing right now. We wouldn't and even I'm be able to make this content. Because I see someone in the comments right now saying that, you know, they're helping introduce people to financial literacy. Again, I mm -hmm. I commend that. I applaud mm -hmm. that. I never said that Rashad, Troy, or Ian are scammers. What I'm saying to you is that when they are made aware that someone else is scamming, that they have a mm -hmm. business relationship with or may have been a guest on their platform, instead of them addressing it, they simply take the video down, right? And right. what me and JT do is we actually react to it, break it down, and teach you as to why this person's a scammer or why what they're promoting is fraud or why what they're doing doesn't work in the business world so that now you can get true financial literacy. Because you understand, if you want, like, for example... If you're 22 years old, 24 years old, you're not going to go and take a, a fifth a, a fifth grade English class, right? Because you should be reading above a fifth grade education. Now, I get it. Some of you don't really have financial literacy. So you go to a place like this to get basic financial literacy topics and, you know, education. Like, understand, they're giving you baseline stuff like how to get a mortgage. I mean, these are really simple things. How to buy a stock, right? Like, now I get it. You're, you're, you're but, telling but, people what a what an FHA loan is, right? That that was very funny. When, <laughs> now I get it for some of you. When, when did, did they, DJ Envy was like, we taught them about FHA loans. <laughs> like, the, the, what are you talking about? A real estate agent <laughs> is going to talk about an FHA loan. Like, what are you? <laughs> but I get it. I get it. For the... For the culture, the culture is very low down there when it comes to financial literacy. So I don't knock them. I commend them what they're doing. They've actually made it cool to buy your first stock. You know, that's great that you got one share Apple. Great. No, no. Two tech and two index. So you got one Apple, you got one NVIDIA. You're on your way to getting rich. But if you really want actual financial literacy concepts and building a model and a portfolio and balancing that portfolio, risk versus reward, how to properly allocate your capital, you're not going there. That's You're not going to get high-level finance. You know, like high-level conversations. You're not going to find that there. If you want the CEO of Robinhood to come in and tell you how he's fucking you over and selling your order flow to Citadel, you go there, right? That's a place where you go to get funneled into some type of an affiliate marketing thing. 
But if you want high level finance, there's plenty of channels on YouTube that engage in high level macroeconomics, talking about how to balance a portfolio, how to properly invest, how to max out your 401ks, like real finance that most of you are going to go through. Because here's the reality. Most of you are not street dudes or street women. Most of you are working class people. And what the things that they're recommending and promoting to you will not work for you which is why so many of you are getting finessed and getting burned because they're not really teaching you financial literacy. It's financial lunacy. <laughs> hey, and real quick, you said that, you know, Rashad, Troy, Ian, you know, they're not scammers. I, I do have to, my, I have to say, I get a lot of DMs about Ian. People have sent me a lot of receipts about Ian. There was issues about he promised people certain products and services if they bought a ticket to go see EYL at Madison Square Garden. They never got it. They bought the ticket. They never got it. So I can't say he gets a free pass because I've got a lot of evidence that shows that he promised somebody something or not just somebody, a large group of people. He promised a large group of people a particular service or product if they bought something. They bought it and they never got it. And a lot of people yeah, I, I, still to this day ha haven't got it. That's what they're telling listen, me. That's the allegation. If, if, if you have that information, send it to me. One thing I don't like to do is I don't like to put something on someone without right. actually seeing it for myself. If it exists, you know me. Yeah, I, got, I, got the, I got the emails and stuff. I'll shoot it to you. But yeah, I just got to put that out there. I'm not going to act as if I never heard a bad yeah. thing about Ian because I have. All right. Now, 19 keys. I don't. I, I got receipts for 19 keys. But uh, like, Ian, Troy, and Richard, I have not yet come across anything to say that they are scammers. Disingenuous, mm -hmm. absolutely. Misleading, absolutely. But scammer, I haven't seen that yet. Got it. I said once again, you can be the internet is that you can say anything and people believe it, and that's the dangerous part of the internet. Yeah. Right? Because it's like you're not going to say sorry when it comes out that it's not true. You're not going to backtrack and say, no, I was wrong. You just say it. Yeah, you could pay to get on your leisure. It's never been proven. Nobody has ever done it. But just say it. Oh, it's in their benefit to support scammers. Why? Just think about it logically. We have you the fastest you make media company in the world. We have lane. billionaires on our, on our show regularly. Why would it be in our benefit to Ooh. bring on scammers, right? <laughs> These are people that people already knew. These are people that were already championed. So if we bring on a person every single week, you don't think that there's a possibility that one person. A lot of these, a lot of these clowns, people never knew. Let's keep it real. A lot of these clowns, people, people did not know Ian Dunlap until them. There's a lot of people who made their name off of Earn Your Leisure. Might in 24 months or 18 months do something, right? You might have a friend who turns out to be a pedophile. Did you know that? Like, did you know that somebody that you might have hanged out with in 24 months is getting arrested for burglary? Is that you? Stop. Stop right there. L let me make this point real quick. And I I'm going to make it by myself without Eli on the screen because I don't want him implicated in this. Pay attention to this. The example that he gave was your friend could be a pedophile. You didn't know. You're not responsible for his actions. Yes, okay. But when you do find out that your friend is a pedophile and someone else comes up to you and asks, hey, is that guy a good guy? Should he? Should I let him babysit my kids? And you just say, I don't know. Do your own research. I don't know if he should be your babysitter for your kids. And you know he's a pedophile. That's the issue. After you find out something is wrong, you have to make it known so other people do not get hurt. The example you gave shows your own negligence. We're not saying you're responsible 100% for the fraudulent behavior, but after you find out about it, what are you doing to warn others? That's the issue that I have. Your fault is that can be shaped and molded and the dangerous thing with the internet that people believe whatever they hear. And this is why before Market Mondays, every single week we say, do your own research. Because 
This is something that's extremely important. Nobody should solely rely on what somebody is telling them. The point of providing information is that now it sparks something in your brain and then you go down a rabbit hole yourself and then you seek other mentors and then you look and do different things and then you can make an intelligent decision for yourself. I'm sorry, real quick, I got to give a shout out to uh, Uncultured Currency. He, he was in the chat. He probably still is in the chat. If you're in the chat, Uncultured uh, Currency, please, please uh, make a, a comment so I can highlight you. He did a reaction video to this also. And when Ian talked about this particular point, we tell people to do their own due diligence. Here we go. Make sure, go to his channel, check out his content. He made a very good point. He, he says that before every market Monday, they say, do your own research. But if you go to the video that he has up recently, you'll see where during a market Monday, Ian Dunlap says, we don't want you to go anywhere else for any type of financial information. Only come here. So what is it? Is it do your own research and this is just for uh, information purposes or is it we are your sole source of financial information only go to us? Because you're talking out of both sides of your neck and you know that your audience is only going to go to you. Because that's the type of audience you have. So don't, when something bad happens, tell them to do their own research. But then when you make a good pick, you tell them only come to us. So shout out to uncultured you know, currency. It's amazing how they say you should do your own due diligence. Maybe you should take your own advice to do some due diligence on the guests that you bring on and, and their backgrounds. And whether or not they actually sell real estate trade stocks, right? Trade options and actually engage in the business practices that you're featuring them on your podcast for. Isn't it interesting how they're telling you to go do your due diligence, yet they don't do their own due diligence? I mean, just make it make sense. Come on, man. This is too easy. Like, see, this Take is like, your like, own <laughs> advice. Giving somebody money to invest for you blankly is a bad idea. That, that's what uh, Dave from Social Proof recently did. If you go to CoffeeZilla and you see the Ponzi scheme that CoffeeZilla is exposing in the episode that I did yesterday, mm -hmm. Dave said that he invested in that Ponzi scheme because he simply trusted the guy who was you know, over the Ponzi scheme and all of his friends who were already invested. I want to know the list of friends who invested in that Ponzi scheme with Dave from Social uh, Proof. Is, is Rashad and Troy on that list of people who invested? I want to see it. So hopefully in part two and part three of CoffeeZilla's uh, series, we can find out who else invested in that Ponzi scheme. Right. Also, I want to. This is not ahead. something that quick, JP. is advised. Yeah. So, I just saw a comment in here talking about uh, Eli came out of hiding because of uh, Caesar's goons. Finally, let me explain something to you. Um, I have never met Caesar. Well, I met Caesar at the Bitcoin conference, but I have not spoken to Caesar since this whole thing happened, and no one affiliated with Caesar has came, come and spoken to me. And I'm sharing on my screen right now, just to make this perfectly clear. If you look at my screen, everything that I've posted, you can share my screen, please, JT. Mm -hmm. uh, everything that I've posted about Cesar Pina, AKA Flippin' NJ, is still up on my page. I can't speak for anyone else and what they do with their page, but my content's still up there. I'm standing on what I said <laughs> and what I posted. At the end of the day, I didn't break the story. Right. I just happened to be on a live with Tony when the story came out. But um, I stand by everything I said and everything is up there and posted. Now, the reason why I'm not speaking about it anymore is because if someone tells me that they spoke to the individuals and that the people are getting back their money and then two of the people came to me and said, hey, I got back my money at that point. I'm going to leave it alone because it doesn't make sense to keep going on and on and on about it. JT's video is still up. My content is still up. I stand on what I said. It's a fucking Ponzi scheme. Right? I'm not dodging what I said. I'm not mincing my words. But what I'm not going to do is keep beating a dead horse 
if he's mm -hmm. a, he's, he's trying to make the people whole, then I'm going to leave it alone. But no goons have appro approached me. No <laughs> one has made me stop making my videos. No one's told me to take anything down, which is why my stuff is still up there. Okay? Want to make that perfectly clear. <laughs> Got it. You should not write somebody a million dollar check and say, can you buy a building for me? That's not something that that's not the best way about it. If you want to enter a deal with somebody, you should have a contract. In place. Yeah, it's a part you, of you, you should have signatures. You should have a lawyer review the contract. These are best practices, right? Yeah. So maybe we can do more information as far as to provide people best practices. But these are that we talk about every single week. So one of the problems is that people try to fast track to success. And usually when you try to get rich quick, you're going to go broke fast. All right, that, so, so that's it. That's the whole video. Now, you won't be able to find that video because they took it down. It was not up on that channel even a full 24 hours. They took it down for whatever reason. Maybe I need to go over there and ask them why they took that video down. But I think it's because of what we just did here tonight. Clearly, the body language showed that, you know, to me, they really didn't believe what they were saying. A lot of the statements that they made were just ridiculously easy to expose that it did not make sense. To open up by saying no one benefits from scamming people, you, you start out making no sense whatsoever. So listen, there's no beef. I actually wish you guys success as long as you do it the right way. That's your guess. It's not hard. It may hurt your revenue stream. You may not be able to sell as many courses through affiliate links if you actually bet your guess, but you'll sleep better at night. Eli, any last words, bro? Yeah, I want to make this perfectly clear. And I spoke about this the other day on my story. This does not benefit me financially. For example, every single Super Chat tonight, I don't make any of that money. That goes to JT, as rightfully so. This is platform. I don't make any money from that. When I'm talking about this stuff on Tony's platform, you're buying badges, that goes to Tony. I haven't seen a significant jump in my course enrollment because, excuse me, most of the people who watch this type of content, they're not interested in buying courses. Most of the people I'm looking at right here in the comments, in the chat, you think buying courses are scams. I mean, y'all even calling me a scammer, right? So it, it doesn't benefit me in any way financially to talk about this content. Because it's not like people are going to come magically and buy from me. If anything, it creates more problems because now you got to worry about people who are benefiting from these scams and schemes and they're making millions of dollars. Now they're going to want to do something to you. So now you're making enemies with people that you don't even know, right? So if anything, this hurts me because now I got to look over my shoulder because I don't know who may have a problem with me, right? Because at the end of the day, you can't miss me. I'm 6'7", 250 pounds. <laughs> Then you got to think about the fact of I have students, right, who actually pay me to, right, to learn from me. And instead of me focusing on my students, I'm now spending two hours, three hours away from my investors, away from my students and talking about this and looking up court cases to have the facts when I speak. So tell me, how do I benefit from this financially? Because as I said before, it's not like the views, like if I'm talking about something like, you know, the inflation rate or the unemployment rate or the debt ceiling, we're not going to have 3,000 people watching that live, right? So this <laughs> is not like there's some type of a correlation or or, or translation and like I benefit from this. And, I, and that's what bothers me so much is it's so disingenuous to sit up here and say that I'm clout chasing. I'm not going to get an interview with Steve Harvey for this type of content. I'm not going <laughs> to have a festival with Diddy speaking. So tell me, how do I benefit from this in any way financially? I can make more money doing what I do than focusing on this. The only reason why I'm so passionate about this is, number one, like JT says, I'm a little petty. And <laughs> you know, it's entertaining to me when I watch you people build up these larger than life characters and, you know, they go so hard. They call themselves young Malcolm and young Martin and they doing it for the culture and they go into Tulsa, Oklahoma and they rebuild a black wall street, just to flop in the most spectacular way. So there's a part of me that gets joy from that of watching it because it's like, you know, you guys build these people up and you make these ego maniacs. And I just love to watch it crash and burn. And I'm just simply, remember, I'm not the reason why it's crashing and burning. 
I'm just documenting the crash and burn. And see, I, I think a lot of you missed that. Like, I, I'm not the reason why big business had bad business practices. That was on him. I'm just documenting it. I'm not the reason why Caesar's mixed up in what he's into. I'm just documenting it, right? So I, I love to document them. And also, more importantly, I like to make this content for the 18, 19, 20-year-old Eli. Because, see, one thing that I always have a chip on my shoulder about is that I never had good mentorship. I never had someone to steer me in the right direction to go get quality information. A lot of the things I learned, I had to learn through trial and error. And it took me much longer to get to where I am now. And if I had someone like myself telling me to, man, stay away from that network marketing stuff and stay away from these MLMs. If I were to focus more on building and developing skill sets, I would have been successful much quicker. And see, that's one of the things I like to focus on. I like to steer the youth in the right direction because most of the older people, and truth be told, if you're a person who even gravitates to that type of stuff, you're finished anyway, right? I speak more to those of you who are on the fence because at the end of the day, listen, man, old, old keys do not unlock new doors. So I'm trying to unlock the younger generation's mind and get them to understand, stay away from this stuff. All that get rich quick for the culture stuff and focus on developing real entrepreneurial skills, building real relationships so that you can thrive in the fourth industrial revolution. That's what I focus on. And it's not even about you following me or buying my course or anything like that. It's about you being able to use discernment because that's one of the most important things, especially with the rise of artificial intelligence and all of these different tools that can really make things appear a certain way. You have to be able to look beyond the surface level and look a little bit deeper and be able to think at the same time while you're doing these different things. And that's what I like to focus on. Now, at the end of the day, I respect what the Rashad, Troy, and Ian and them built. It's phenomenal. And if you want to keep it phenomenal, you need to listen to someone like JT and myself and either get someone in-house to vet these individuals. Because see, here's the funny thing you actually would actually be a hero in the culture's eyes if you actually just put out a statement and said, hey, I don't really understand what's going on right now, but because of that, I am no longer affiliated with this individual. It's called PR, public relations. And you should definitely get a PR person to handle your media when things go bad because the way y'all handle it is absolutely atrocious. Now, if you could take my advice or you don't have to because eventually, see... It's not me creating these narratives. It's the victims of the guests that you had on your platform that are creating these narratives, right? Because it's not a narrative, it's reality. You've had people on your platform who have engaged in fraudulent business practices. And now it's not even just the fraudulent business practices. It's also the questionable tax advice. It's also the questionable credit advice. See, you, you try to deflect and make it seem like it's only about the scamming and it's not. What about when you're teaching people tax evasion and how they can write off a URS and all this crazy stuff <laughs> that you see on these plat these podcasts and the URS isn't even 6,000 pounds, right? Like, but see, you need people like JT to come behind that foolishness and say, that doesn't make any sense, right? Or trying to run your funding, your business credit cards through payment processors and generating taxable events. See, they leave that out. So when you have people like myself and JT, we're not hating on the culture. We're not trying to take down the culture. We're just trying to raise the financial intelligence of the culture. Listen, go subscribe to Eli. What happened to Common Sense? Go subscribe to him. Listen, if you like this type of content, if you want financial literacy where I am reacting to bad financial advice, and I do do call-in shows where you can call in and ask me your money question, I do the best I can to give you the best financial tip to help you live a better life. Subscribe to Pocket Watching with JT. And I also have a free financial literacy course. Go to pocketwatcher.net, click the Pocket Watcher Academy link, and you can enroll in a free course that teaches you how to budget, how to deal with your debt, and how to actually get on the road to building wealth. And if you like this merch, go to pocketwatcher.net also, and you can get your own misdemeanors over felonies scam your leisure merch we got a bunch of other shirts so i appreciate it i'll catch you guys in the next so oh, the pocket watch is out want to make sure i got all the super chats everyone who gave a super chat thank you so much i appreciate it if you have some content some bad financial advice that you saw online that you want to see me react to you can email it to 
pocketwatcherjt at gmail.com. Or if you are on social media, all you got to do is tag me in the post. My social media links are right here. Just tag me in the post. I'll check it out. And maybe you'll see me react to the video. Other than that, the Pocket Watcher is out. I'll catch you guys next time.